What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got an interesting knife to show you. Uh, this is the Artisan Cutlery Orthodox. This is the large version and it's also the more budget version. Uh, so Artisan Cutlery like some other um, uh, brands right now is doing this thing where they make a premium version of their product and then they make a version of the exact same knife, but they make it uh, with materials that allow them to bring the price down um, to a more reasonable level for a lot of people. And I actually really like that. I think that's neat. These knives are manufactured in China. Um, I believe the titanium and M390, I think it's titanium and M390 version of this, runs $200. The version in front of you runs 60 and then they've got a small version that... Uh, is I think only available in this G10 and D2 variant you're seeing in front of you. I think it's like 50 bucks or something like that. I found this on eBay. Um, actually, I've got uh, the gentleman's card inside the box here. I'll go ahead and show the packaging. Here's what this comes in. It also comes in a little artisan uh, pouch. And, you know, I showed the Falcon the other day, which was an example of, of one of Artisan's premium blades. Uh, that came in a metal tin, which I, I unfortunately did not show on the, on the uh, review, but I did show it on the unboxing, so you can go back and watch the unboxing if you want to see that. Yeah, this was, uh, I found this through Action Concepts, uh, James Marsh, Action Concepts on eBay. I've bought from that guy multiple times. He always ships really, really fast and uh, um, absolutely does a lot of business on uh, eBay. Um, I think he's a, um, I think he is an authorized Medford hinderer dealer. I think he's an authorized, uh, uh, it's not Trident Knives anymore. Crusader Forge dealer. I, I don't know. I know he's a big eBay dealer. So if you ever see him on uh, eBay, just know I've, I've probably ordered 15 knives from him and it's always gone perfectly. So you can buy with uh, trust there. Anyways, let's get on with this knife here. So this knife was actually, I got to give credit where credit's due. After I did the, um, the Gerber um, flat iron, which I hated, um, it really bummed me out because I like that blade shape. I like that kind of, you know, uh, sort of straight razor looking blade and um, it really bummed me out that the flat iron was so bad and I had a commenter say hey you should check out the artisan orthodox if you like that I think it's made a lot better so thank you um, I'm, I cannot remember your name but thank you for suggesting this if you uh, if you're watching right now uh, overall length on this knife is just shy of nine inches looks about eight a little over eight and three quarter inches uh, blade length on it. Total blade length is about three, three and seven eighths. It's not quite four inches. Cutting edge is three and a quarter. There's a large forward choil there on the um, the front, right in front of the pivot. Uh, let's do some size comparisons. Up against the Ontario Rat Model One, you can see their Rat One coming in at eight point six inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Paramilitary Two? Spyderco Paramilitary 2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about against the Benchmade Griptilian? But not the Benchmade Griptilian, actually. This is going to be uh, the new um, Hogue version, the new uh, Ritter Hogue version of the knife that I just unboxed. Um, the uh, That's the exact same size as the original Benchmade Griptilian at about 8 inches. And last but not least, how about up against the Spyderco Delica? Delica coming in at seven inches overall. So this is a pretty big knife. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. This knife is on bearings. Give you a demo of the action there. Pretty nice considering it's a $60 knife from China. Um, let me turn that on real quick. Okay, weight on this guy, 4.37 ounces. Let's try it on the other side. 4.37 ounces. So in between four and a quarter and four and a half. Not bad considering how big it is. Uh, this is a very thick knife. That was the very first thing that really caught me by surprise. You can see there it's centered. Blade thickness is not quite the same as the XM18, but man, it's close. It's probably about 0.155. Definitely 155 thousandths. Definitely thicker than the PM2 at 145 thousandths. Not by much, just a little tiny bit. But it's thick. You can see there down the nose, I guess, however you want to say that. Let's go ahead and do the paper cut test. 
Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with my channel, this paper cut test is a non-definitive paper cut test. Some of you will get something out of this, some of you won't. It's basically just designed to give you an example of how sharp the edge is out of box versus the universal standard of sliciness, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. What I'll do is I'll take a pass of the PM2 and then take a pass of the knife in question and tell you what I feel in terms of resistance. So, PM2, slicey as usual. How about the Artisan Cutlery Orthodox? Also, I'm, I'm dead serious. It's surprisingly slicey. I mean, that thing just looks like an elongated axe wedge um, or a just like a... A skinny meat cleaver, you know, I'm not really, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but the, um, the second, the second example makes more sense than the first one. It looks like a skinny meat cleaver. I was so shocked that it wanted to slice paper. I was like, what the heck? Let me show you guys that again. Yeah. I mean, this thing is ready. Look at that. It's, it's ready to go. That's crazy. That thing is, re is razor sharp for how thick it is. I, I honestly, I cannot believe that. The, bl the edge geometry and the blade geometry overall do not give me this feeling like it's just going to melt uh, or, or just, you know, laser through paper like that. Now, obviously, it's going to change depending on what you're cutting. I don't know how well, may, maybe that'll go, you know, maybe that'll uh, break down boxes really well. Um, I imagine it would be fine for getting packages open. I don't know. It's definitely going to, the performance is going to change depending on what you're cutting. Um, but yeah, it slices paper really well. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of the knife. What you have here is a stonewashed, very nicely stonewashed, uh, D2 blade. Go ahead and flip it over there so you can see. Sorry, I don't know what my camera is doing right now. It says China. Uh, there's a serial number, which is interesting. And then it says D2. The blade is really nicely done. It's nice and rounded up here. No, no sharp parts, except for, of course, the blade and the tip. The blade is nicely sharpened. It looks very even on both sides. The forward finger choil gives you a lot of room to choke up on this blade. This looks like a straight razor. It looks exactly like an old school shaving razor, um, but it's got a flipper tab. The action is great. The blade is long and heavy enough, uh, and the detent is, is tuned well enough that it's going to flip reliably every single time, no matter how you're flipping it. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can kneel down and flip straight up. Yeah. It still works. So, yeah, the flipping action is great. The bearings are just fine. Uh, moving down to the, um, the handle scales here, you've got Artisan Cutlery's um, symbol, which at first glance looks like something that should not be on anything. Um, but uh, it's, it's not. It's, it's their own, their own uh, symbol. It's actually different than the symbol that we're seeing on the blade itself. That's interesting. Okay, so, yeah, the official symbol is definitely what's on the blade. I imagine they just made the pivot look like it. The adjustment side of the pivot is on the other side, the simple Torx head. Now these scales, you'll notice if you're looking at pictures of this online, you'll notice that some of these models have flat peel ply texture G10 scales. Now I found one picture where it looked like they were contoured and I had to hunt for a little bit, but I found this large version with contoured G10 scales. And I imagine this is a newer version. Uh, I really like this versus um, what I was seeing with the other one. I, I kind of would have been bummed out, I think, to get a flat, plain, you know, Manix 2 G10 scale looking version of this because it just, it makes a lot more sense to me with the Contour G10. And that Contour G10 is done really, really nicely if we can zoom in on it so you guys can see. But it looks nice. It feels nice. It lines up correctly with the liners. Fit and finish on this thing is just excellent. They're doing the filler tab thing, artisan cutlery. Um, it's weird, um, but it's fine. Everything fits. Um, there are no standoffs except for this one back here, this one massive barrel spacer that is keeping uh, the integrity of the knife intact. But just all the way around, really, really nice um, fit and finish there. Very impressed. Moving on to the back side of the knife here, um, it's much of the same, except you have a, a little deep carry pocket clip. The pocket clip is a very simple deep carry clip. It's got those screws that stick up, but I've had no trouble getting it in and out of my pants. I imagine this will eventually snag on something. It sticks out quite a bit and it'll probably bend off and break off. I don't know how hard it'll be to get a, another clip from these guys, but, um, I, I would imagine that, uh, there's a way to do it. I, I have no idea though. So don't quote me on that. You have a pretty thick steel liner lock here. Now, I haven't been using this knife 
it's locking up at oh probably 50 60 percent there's a little teeny tiny bit of lock stick it's not that bad it's been slowly going away over time you can kind of see it there wanting to stick just a little bit i will say i absolutely 100 percent expected there to be blade play on this thing i was like there's no way the um the handle's too narrow the blade's you know thick it just it looks like something that would wiggle around a lot but 100 percent honest no blade play in any direction um it's absolutely 100 percent solid um i imagine like any knife it'll develop a little bit over time but i think you can just tighten up the pivot and get rid of that um the uh the action like i said is great lockout's great there's only one thing about this knife that bothers me uh in terms of function so in this closed position, it is stable. It's not coming out of there. Uh, there's no uh, closed position slop or play. It wiggles just, just a little tiny bit, but it's solid. It's not rubbing. But the detent is mushy. Let me see if I can get this. It, it just kind of mushes in there. So um, now I know I'm using a, a $600 hinderer to give this example, but I like... Uh, I like detents that sound like this on clothes. That sounds good to me. Um, how about uh, how about on a knife that's about the same uh, cost as the um, as the Orthodox? Uh, this is the um, Bestec Lion in D2. Listen to this detent. Click. I like that. This sounds like. I don't know. It sounds like uh, somebody's uh, dropping a small bean bag into a, uh, a vat of mashed potatoes. That's that's a weird um, <laughs> that's a weird example. But that's what it feels. It's just mushy. It just kind of goes. It's I don't I don't know uh, exactly how to describe that. Now, functionally, that doesn't cause any issue whatsoever. It just doesn't create a very satisfying feeling, and it's odd, and it bothered me. It bothered me enough to point it out, and this knife would otherwise be really fun to play with, and I think I would carry it despite its very odd look. Um, that mushy detent just kind of bothered me. It's really not a big deal. That's just me being overly nitpicky. Um, this knife will absolutely be one of my giveaway knives. And believe me, I know some of you are like, hey, you said you were going to do another giveaway uh, back when you showed the FH11. Um, I am definitely going to do another giveaway. Um, the Bestec Lion in D2, um, the, um, the uh, Firebird FH11 from Gonzo, which is not on the table right now, and the Artisan Orthodox will all be giveaway knives. Um, they all function perfectly. Their fit and finish is excellent. They're all black G10 and D2 steel blades. They have all got bearings. They're really, really nice uh, budget knives. And I, I think you guys, they're all different enough that I think um, they'll kind of speak to a wide uh, range of different people. I think, uh, um, you know, uh, three lucky winners will be really happy with any of these. But anyways, this is a great knife. I don't know how utilitarian this blade shape is. You know, without a tip, I like I, I love this blade shape. It's it's interesting. And I'm waiting for some company, any company, American company, Chinese company, uh, somewhere in Taiwan, it doesn't matter. I'm waiting for somebody to really knock it out of the park. This is close. This is the best example of this that I've seen. I know Red Horse Knives makes the chopper um, and the, uh, is it there's something about is it the Red Death or something like that? And then um, ADV or Andre de Villiers or however you say his name, he makes the Butcher. Um, uh, there's there's a bunch of really, really expensive ones. I want to see one of these like in the $50, $60 range. Um, I want to see somebody just nail it. The Pilar or the Pilar, the Pillar, it's not quite the blade shape that I'm after. I like this straight razor look. Um, Gerber, if they could get their fit and finish together, might have had a really good design. This is really, really good, but I just I want to I want to see what else happens with this look because this is really cool. Um, this is a great knife uh, if you're looking for this type, this style of folding knife, one that looks like an old school shaving razor. Um, this is the least expensive, highest quality thing. I mean, like in terms of quality to cost ratio, this is the best thing that's out there. And like I said, they've got a smaller version. It's about like this. So if you want something a little bit smaller, you don't have to go with this one. And if you like this and you want the ultra premium version, it's either S35VN or M390. I'm inclined to believe that it's M390 given that the Falcon was M390 and it's in all titanium. 
They have different anodized colors. Blue and bronze probably always have blue and bronze. Maybe they've got different colors too. And then of course there's a standard Stonewash version. In the G10 versions, they have at least the OD green and some variant of tan, maybe some others. As far as the blade goes, I think they're all stonewashed. Um, but uh, this is really, really cool. Um, I'm not going to recommend it as like one of the best EDC knives I've ever handled, but it is certainly cool. It's certainly a fun conversation piece, and it is made very well, and it's made out of mat materials that are um, going to be dependable if you choose to actually carry and use this knife. I, th I, think, it'll, I think it'll do all right. So... Anyways, that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Um, I didn't mention this, but it's worth mentioning. Um, I, this is probably unbelievably easy to take apart. Talk about like, you know, we've got the pivot and then this thing back here, which actually now that I look at it, if it's like the, I hope it's not like the lanyard barrel on the Manix 2, um, that because that makes the Manix 2 really difficult to take apart. But if if this just slips up off of this thing, which you know it probably doesn't. I don't know. In terms of the total amount of parts on this knife, it's very very minimal. In terms of ease of disassembly, if that back uh, standoff or tube or whatever the heck that thing is, uh, if that comes uh, out of there easily, then. I would imagine that um, disassembly and maintenance on this knife will just be unbelievably easy to the end user. But anyways, oh, sorry, that was kind of an afterthought. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So please check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there is definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.